Um, okay, uh, welcome to Coffee Not Found. Um, in this episode, I'm joined by Jack again. And this time we have Heather. Hello. Um, so both kind of popped down from the office to, to make sure I didn't make too many mistakes. Um, this episode, we're going to discuss uh, product placement in video games. It's something that's been done a lot and it's nearly always been around the video game world, even going back to the, uh, the old consoles and, and Commodores. But um, a lot of people spend their time in a virtual world, and so it's important for companies to market into them in the game. Um, and when it's done right, product placement can really stick um, properly, but if it's done incorrectly, it'll stick out like a sore thumb. Um, so a lot of racing and sports games easily promote sponsors through team jerseys uh, for FIFA and um, the cars in Gran Turismo or Need for Speed. Yeah, um, Madden tends to be full of them. Like Madden by EA Sports. Yeah. It's in the American football game, like the place is plastered in sponsors. So you don't know, like in a game like FIFA, you're not going to notice sponsors because if you're watching a football match, oh, okay. there's sponsors everywhere. So yeah. they, get, they can plug stuff really, really easily. Yeah. I've seen it with the, not that I've played much of it lately, but there was like um, racing car management games and stuff, and you'd be selling the sponsorship on the, all the cars and stuff, and like yeah, these real yeah. products, and you're going to, that's actually quite clever. Um, I suppose that's something they get though when they um, when they buy in for sponsorship of a team. So like, yeah. um, if if you're, I, I could try and think of even sponsorship Ferrari and Shell, for example. Like, I mean, yeah, it yeah. kind of goes back. Um, yeah, the one when we said this was going to be a topic for the podcast, the first thing we kind of thought of wasn't actually video games; it was Wayne's World. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I don't know anyone who's old enough to remember Wayne's World or has seen the reruns. Uh, it's when Wayne and Gareth um, kind of talk about selling out, and every yeah. take it's a different product and re- different gear. Um, there was wasn't there Lucasade? No, no, it was a uh, Pepsi. Pepsi choice for new generation. That was it, all in blue. Yeah, and then there was a uh, Gareth was dressed like head to toe in Reebok gear, so like he was like like. It's like how people just do stuff for the money, man, and he was like completely covered in Reebok gear. Yeah, and there's like Pizza Hut and. Doritos feature in as well. That's one of the first ones, I think. Yeah, but you were saying Doritos are in everything. everything. Yeah. yeah, Doritos are in everything. Like um, uh, Halo and the Modern Warfare series of Call of Duty or like their websites and stuff. They're not actually placed in game in those games, like product placements, but they tend to sponsor a lot. Lot. Okay. Um, Competitions in game for like free crates of stuff. For cool. Um, and then yeah, so I mean, I suppose some examples. So again, I. It, for this, in terms of marketing and everything, like gamification is great, but putting products into a game so that you're exposed to them just playing it is quite a clever kind of system. Yeah. Um, and there's random ones, I suppose, like Burnout Paradise was the, came out in what, 2008, we're in the presidential elections? Yeah. Um, so that was Obama's campaign, um, entered the virtual world. Um, what was it? There were billboards for Obama, wasn't it? Yeah, there yeah. billboards on the road. Um, I don't know if I've played the game, a lot of it, but I can't remember if you actually, I think I played it afterwards, they released an update once the elections were finished, Oh, and, okay. you couldn't, and it took the billboards away yeah. and replaced them with um, like different brands or like in-game generic fake brands or whatever, but I, I don't know, I know that you're able to do jumps like through the billboards, so I kind of wondered if you could like jump straight into Obama or something oh, okay, in yeah, the game, because yeah, yeah. like, yeah. I know the billboards were like, uh, they were breakable like as props. Oh, okay. All right. Well, on certain ramps, I think that would be yeah. even an interesting take on his yeah, election I, campaign. I, like, I, I would have liked to see the stats. Like you know, if you put different candidates up on the billboard, how yeah. many times did people smash that um, the the billboard? Um, okay, cool. And then another one you kind of highlight was Fight Night Three. Yeah, Fight Night Three and Burger King. What was that about? Well. In Fight Night Three, like it, because again, it's another EA sports game or sports game in general. Like you're used to seeing products placed as part of the background or whatever it may be. So like Burger King was there's a Burger King fight. You get an invitation to as far as I'm aware, and Burger King is plastered in the middle of the ring. But they took it like one step further, where Burger King, the actual Burger King in costume, comes in with like his big massive Burger King head, and he's the mascot, and like he's your coach in the corner. And it's okay. kind of a bit strange, like it's a bit of a mixed message for such a healthy game. Yeah, <laughs> you know, well, like it's all about your fitness and your strength level, and he's there selling you chicken nuggets in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose, you know, yeah. yeah, 
Maybe that's why you're able yeah. to do all this, you know? Yeah, no, that's true. Um, but again, yeah, I suppose but it was... Uh, yeah, it was a very played level, as far as I'm aware. Like, people found it quite hilarious, so obviously it worked. Yeah. It got the product out there for someone. Who doesn't like a mascot? Although I wonder what it would have been like yeah. if you could actually fight the mascot. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, and then another one was Alan Wake. Yeah. So that was a uh, Verizon mobile carrier and energizer batteries in if anyone has played alan wake like in alan wake you your biggest like weapon against these people who are taken over by the darkness and is your torch and because the torch breaks down like their defense um but the torch in alan wake is actually powered by energizer batteries and they have like the real packets done up in game and you pick them up and i think in the first cutscene when you pick up the torch it actually says energizer along the side of it and um, yeah, it was a, it was quite an interesting campaign because your torch is like your lifeline. I don't think I think in terms of how, of whether it would actually work or not for Energizer, it's a bit strange because I think when you focus your flashlight on full for for like seven seconds, you run out of batteries. Like the whole I was just going to say the difficulty to the game is that you don't have full charge all the time you you have to try and save your batteries and they they run out very very quickly i don't know how that would actually work for them yeah. as a slogan or anything like yeah good for seven seconds of zombie fighting and yeah, that, sorry lads you that's know it. um yeah no that's the, the, the when you mentioned that one to me it's like that yeah that could go either way like i mean i suppose you're just getting the brand out there but yeah i mean if Duracell is out there with an ad saying run seven times longer you're going geez i would have killed all those guys if i'd had the yeah yeah, yeah. Um, then the Verizon mobile carrier one was a basically the Verizon is everywhere in the game like billboards have Verizon on them and a lot of get like uh, games development companies will put them in to make the world seem more real so, so you see stuff you're used to seeing in the real world so it's mm. as if this apocalypse actually happened um, but uh, in one of the scenes in one of the main scenes I think it's a very story led game it's not too open world but in one part of the game, you can stop and actually watch a thirty-second Verizon TV ad, and if okay. you and if you watch it to the end, you get an achievement. And then okay. another, and then the Energizer batteries. If you put a hundred batteries in your torch in the game, you get the achievement like Energized. Uh -huh. But didn't the DLC the the batteries changed? Yeah, in the DLC that came out for the game, the batteries went to like generic. So I imagine that could have had something to, to do, do with the, the fact seven-second torch. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah the torch is really really good that stays energizer but the batteries are no longer energizer yeah um, okay yeah because I know that watching TV and games it kind of crops up I know because we were chatting in the office earlier about uh, Ricky Gervais yeah and what was it the not the last Grand Theft Auto the one before you could go and watch a comedy yeah. game where he was given the comedy gig that was a lot of fun um, yeah, some pretty cool stuff like that yeah yeah. do they have product placement in Grand Theft Auto they have to I imagine so, yeah. yeah. I can't remember. I've played a lot of them. Yeah. And it's kind of hard to tell. I know they don't They don't use real cars and stuff because I think mm. that's... Cars are probably, are probably tricky because I think whoever gets the contract gets the contract. Like FIFA has the license to use the team jerseys, but Pro Evolution Soccer doesn't. Gotcha. So the teams have actually got fake names in Pro Evolution, but FIFA is allowed to have the real Light ones. Up, yeah, yeah. So I think in Grand Theft Auto, like, there's cars with very similar names, but yeah. not the actual yeah. names. Of well, as, as well, again, it comes back to the Energizer battery thing. If the thing is to steal cars, and you can steal the car like that, yeah, it's not really a great advertisement <laughs> no, for your great. performance <laughs> car. Them, no. um, all right, and then the next one you have on the list, uh, Final Fantasy. So this was not in-game product placements, but it was a campaign, is it? Yeah, it was a, a like a fashion campaign. There was actually two of them. So there was like uh, Louis Vuitton did one most recently in 2016, which seems to be the most famous one. Mm. They had Lightning headline their spring summer connection. Lightning is like a female heroine from the game for those of you who haven't played it. Mm -hmm. And so they have like a CGI kind of shoot, and they did a Square Enix Visual Studios did like a animation for it and stuff. Okay, it's, it's quite cool. The way it was done, a lot of people. Mm -hmm. They haven't, okay. but there's something similar that actually happened in The Sims too. They did H. Uh, well, for one of the expansion packs, they did an association with H and M, oh, and okay. IKEA as well. But they actually had their. Whole and you see them get in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and The Sims had yeah, to get voted. Voting, yeah. yeah, but they um, did an expansion pack for H and M and for IKEA, so they actually had real life products in the game. 
Oh, okay. Okay. Which is actually what started me off with my addiction with IKEA. <laughs> oh, nice. So the same. <laughs> so it actually worked. Yeah, it did. Yeah, that's very happy. Yeah. Like, but that's I didn't it's even because this back maybe ten over ten years ago. I didn't even hear of H and M before then. I don't think it had hit Ireland as big. No, it had. Oh, the, okay. Yeah, because yeah. they only had maybe probably the Blanche mm. store or something like that. If at they the time. did it even all, if they had, yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. That's pretty cool. So that actually proves the point. Without having, uh, there you go. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> so it does work. Um, all we need now is someone to come across with like some useful stuff for us that you know the video games can advertise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 3D printer company or something. Yeah, that'll be um, cool. Okay, and then Mario Kart Eight and Mercedes. So yeah. this was when which which one was Eight? Was that the last uh, one? It was on the Wii U. Okay, all right. So rather there was an Eight on DS as well, but I think this this campaign was mainly with you as far as okay. I know. Tell us more, Mr. Researcher. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Mercedes-Benz partnered with uh, Nintendo in on the, around the release of Mario Kart 8. They also released a, a new line of car, Mercedes GLA. Um, I think they were SUVs or some sort of car close to that. Anyway. Okay. But they uh, made a free DLC that you could download and you got like three mercedes cars in the game so like i think two of them were like iconic classics like one from the 30s and one from the 50s um and it was released in august 2014 so there you go okay thank you and uh, <laughs> the players could download the tree carts in game and alongside the mercedes benz cars that you could download there was a mercedes cup created so for like the online play people could compete against each other in the mercedes cars oh okay which i think gives it that kind of the element of competition so, promotes it a lot more. But Mario Kart, the characters are normally quite Yeah, they're, they're, they're quite so funny looking. I'll, if I can get a pic picture, I'll put it on screen for the YouTube people. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, no, because that, that, that seems a bit weird. Yeah, it's, and, yeah, he yeah. Did, just kind of poking out at the top of it. Like, there's just like a convertible and like oh, okay. your character is like sitting in it. It's, it's tiny, <laughs> but it's really cool. It, it looks kind of odd because they're so sleek compared yeah, to like the say, cartoony, yeah, the cartoony, the cartoony car and then... A, True to life, three yeah. you know, three hundred SL Roadster or whatever. But um, from the YouTube videos, I've seen people liked it. They yeah, thought it was cool. cool. Um, totally unrelated. I was watching a travel program at the weekend, and because the they were doing Tokyo because the Olympics coming up in a couple of years, oh, yeah. and you can do a Mario Kart tour of Tokyo. <laughs> and like really? literally they've gotten carts dressed them up a bit kind of Mario Karty. Now they got in a lot of trouble, so I don't think they're called Mario Karts now. They're called um something very very similar but not quite and you can't you don't it was that you were all dressed up because they were all in like these onesie um custom made kind of pit you know pit yeah, lane suits yeah they they, they, <laughs> yeah they, they, they give you the outfit because the, the woman doing the interview part was wearing the mario outfit but yeah. to get away from getting sued by nintendo because apparently nintendo were quite annoyed um, they had to bring in other characters as well. So one of them is dressed as Spider-Man, someone else is dressed as something else, just to keep it a bit oh, more random. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I would imagine if everyone comes in and gets their pick of outfit, then you're surely going to pick, you know, all the characters from Mario Kart. But you should see them. They zip, and they're on street. Like, they're not, you know, they're like, there's taxi they're, drivers and they're zipping in, in some, there. like, vlogs and stuff where, like, people will meet them on the street and they'll be like, oh, look, you're on YouTube. And, like, they'll build all the guys in the carts and stuff. And they're, yeah, they're in a lane, like, yeah, yeah. on the street in traffic. Uh, and they go through like the main area, like because I know there's a, there's a junction in Tokyo, and it's been featured in tons of movies. I know the one that always sticks in my memory is um, one of the Fast and the Furious, where the guy is racing around. It's the one where he died, they kill off the the Asian character. Um, yeah, um, I can't remember his name. Can't remember his name now, but whatever. Anyway, but like you know, they're all supposed to be the good guys, and yeah, he's rallying it around yeah, while there's yeah. pedestrians and pedestrians across. But that doesn't seem very hero like. Oh, yeah, I can't remember. It's massive. It's like the biggest pedestrian, one of the biggest pedestrian crossings in the world, or something. And there's just this big zebra crossing, and like a load of people are constantly yeah just trying. I don't know. Like I don't know. Like is traffic even able to get through it? Well, the Mario ones were anyway. Yeah. It, was, it was a really cool scene to watch it going through. Now apparently people have been hit by taxis and stuff. Yeah. So uh, you're very low down and you're kind of moving around but I just thought it was uh, it was quite an interesting thing and totally unrelated to what we were talking about except for the Mario reference but yeah. it was pretty good um, and then for Uncharted 3 there was a promotion for online multiplayer game mode what was it Naughty Dogs um, was it Fast Food Subway was it yeah uh, they featured like I think you bought a, a certain ounce drink there's a trailer for it online where like 
I think it's Nathan Drake, the guy from Ontario yeah, Trade. Yeah. yeah, he uh, he like is like when you buy, I think it's thirty ounce drink or something like that. You get a uh, promotional codes and stuff, and you get you get like subway gear for in game. So like, there's people with like subway t-shirts and subway hats in on chair on the multiplayer. Which is oh, kind okay. Of, Jeez. Yeah. Because <laughs> you'd want to do that. Yeah. Although they they've done product placement before, because they did even down to the likes of tongue and cheek stuff. Was a Happy Gilmore. Mm. And he he does an ad for Subway, oh, okay. and he's there with his gun, and he drives the Subway into your man's mouth, and you're like, oh god, that's yeah. so cringy. But again, it works. A lot of people, I think. I think once they put a comedic side to it, where they're almost making a joke. Yeah, they're making a joke of product placement, but it generally works as product placement. Like, I'm sure the scene in Wayne's World probably almost paid for the whole movie. If you think about it, like, yeah, on, like there's so many big famous products featured in a minute clip. Yeah, where they're making fun of product placement and selling out, but it's actually it's a product placement. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's true. Um, Next one, then, it was uh, Pizza Hut, which I've seen in a few games. EverQuest 2, again, another game I haven't played. Yeah, it's a MMO or PG, as far as I'm aware. Okay, all right. And well, the company added a way for players to order and pay for a takeaway in-game. Yeah. And the door, and it's delivered in real life. Yeah, yeah. You don't even, you don't, they don't even have to tab out to go to like their, their online thing. And also, this was done quite a while ago, so I don't know how big online... Like, like Everquest yeah, yeah. 2 is around a while as far as I know. You can order Domino's from your Xbox. I've yeah. done that. Oh, but that's yeah, like, that's, cool. that's a separate, but like the way the Xbox works now, you can just flick in and out of apps and go back in and it's still where it was. Yeah, no, they like, you can order pizza. The only thing that you have to do is get up and go to the door. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> when it gets there. Whether or not people can order their pizza and keep playing. Keep playing. Jeez. Mm. That's pretty good going because I know yeah. we've looked at it for the pool game that we're working on mm. at the moment. You yeah. can, we were looking that because they're going into pubs that you would be able to order from the, the screen while you're playing. Oh, yeah. So you wouldn't have to disturb your game. You could just go and away you go. Now, I know other pubs already have apps for that. I know yeah, um, yeah. you can get the Weatherspoons app and you can yeah. order your food and stuff to your to your table um, and have paid for it already. But uh, that's pretty that's pretty clever. I like that. Um, yeah, until true. some kid does it not realizing it's a real ordering system <laughs> and then all hell all breaks loose. Because you know, yeah. uh, I had, we had a, I don't think it's still going. It's not on yeah, the yeah. site anymore, but yeah. it, I think it's cool. Yeah, no, it's a clever idea. It's, it's just because I know, um, again, unrelated, I was at an event talking to somebody the other day and they were giving out loads because they heard, oh, we build games. And like <laughs> it's like opening up a can of worms. It's either, oh, that's so cool, or, oh, what did I tell you? And it was, uh, yeah. his kid had ordered, two, spent 240 euros in a weekend on, on one of the online games I don't think it was FIFA but one of those games oh okay like and, on, uh, on microtransactions yeah, whatever, yeah yeah and he was giving it's out loads and I was going why did you give him your credit card and yeah like oh, well I just thought he was getting the game and I was like yeah. I know I know there's two sides to it it's too yeah, easy to do yeah. and everything but at the same time you know I do think people should be more aware of the fact that your details can are just generally a ticked box that your details will be saved yeah, yeah. like I know from like being in web development and stuff, it's generally you know, they either have to tick the box or untick the box because your details would be saved as like you know like it's like saving your PayPal login. To yeah, it says like one click pay in yeah. PayPal. Yeah. So yeah. like, kind of have to be aware of that. Like, especially if you're using like, it's a lot, I know a lot of people who'd like buy, go online and buy a present because like game a lot like most games are bought virtually nowadays. Like, yeah. Like a huge majority of them. So <laughs> you know like if I was getting my let's say my stepbrother a present, I'd be like, oh, I'll buy you a Steam game. Well, that's yeah. a bit different because you can if you have you a Steam account, you can give code. Them, yeah. But like on PlayStation Store or whatever. Yeah. It, it's it, it tends to automatically save your Visa yeah. or credit card or whatever. Yeah. Even if just you say yeah, look, put a pin on it, and I have to yeah. come in because let's face yeah. it, you shouldn't be buying more than one game every couple like. Unless you're just shock stockpiling them, like I mean, yeah. now, this is coming from the guy that plays like two games a year and uh, just completely disappears into the game for a week and then it's done, and you know, I'll come back six months later. Yeah, um, like Steam Store is like two hundred and fifty or two hundred eighty games or something. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow. I'm like a panic bundle buy person, so yeah. like if a bundle goes on sale for a ten or it contains every game in the series, I'll buy that. But generally, only play one game out of it. Like I'm just one of those people who like hoards. Okay. games in their Steam library or I'm one of those people who has a Mac so there's no point <laughs> yeah. so it's like you know I, and, and before anyone goes oh he's a Mac bird. like I've, I've I've had PC I've had Linux it's just it happens to be if you're building if you're building games for um, 
iPhone and and um, Apple, it's it's just easier to have an, an yeah, Apple yeah, and it's computer. Handy to have in the office, especially. Yeah. But um, yeah, it does mean that my choice of games are quite limited, and generally I tend to purchase on store on like yeah. Xbox. Um, Okay, then next one. Jeez, there is an awful lot of them. Um, so Metal Gear Solid, uh, what was this one? Um, yeah, so Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, not in the English version, but in the Japanese version, had loads of product placement on it. So, and I think the uh, the developer or the creator himself actually said it was to keep things fresh and to like include a real world element and I think that works really well for and one that we'll get to is like one is Homefront used quite a lot of them and I think uh, in Payday 2 they use some more like or in Need for Speed you drive past the diner it's actually Burger King okay. and that works because it's Burger King but I, in Metal Gear they kind of threw like packets of Doritos and cans of Mountain Dew and Pepsi like in the jungle Okay. Stuff. So it it was I I actually thought it was kind of cool if I found it when I was playing Metal Gear I'd be like oh that's cool and I'd remember it but yeah some people thought it might stand out but it really depends on the people like I think these things that generally tend to go if enough people find it cool then yeah it looks well you know because I mean it's the not, other... it's 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 more of an easter egg than an yeah. integral part of the game yeah. yeah um well I'm just thinking of Nuka Cola and Fallout like I mean it's everywhere and it's mm. not, it's a non-existent product but like it's just it's every, everywhere mm. but then on the off opposite side as well um What's the name of it? Calf powder. So there's a drink in NCIS that the uh, forensic scientist Abby drinks all the time. It's calf oh, powder. Okay. It's a big, you know, she drinks it like it's a, I don't know what liter age, but like it's like a bucket. Yeah. And this is supposed to be her juice that she runs on. But it got so popular and people were looking for it so much, someone released calf powder. Oh, wow, that's cool. So you can go out and buy, in the States, I suppose, calf powder drink and it's just like as seen on the telly you know um so that's where like you're kind of realizing that yeah actually if you create a brand in in a virtual environment it becomes a real world thing sometimes yeah another one is cool. duff beer yeah, yeah duff, duff beer, beer exists duff beer. Yeah, yeah yeah i mean and the same kind of cartoony looking cans as well yeah and done stores i think yeah i only ever came across it when i was abroad it's awful I've never it's, had. It's, I imagine it's, it's awful. I actually, I, I threw out like I got a six pack and the cans just because they yeah. were cool, and I gave them to mates. And I just said, get, every time I gave them to someone, I said, look, don't drink it, or if you do, don't criticize me for just the taste the of shelf, it. Just put it on the it. shelf and look cool. at it. It'll look cool. That's great. And that's what it is. I have a can and a bottle still at home sitting there. It will never be opened. Oh, it's rotten stuff. Yeah. Um. So and then Homefront. You were saying what happened in Homefront? Homefront has. Uh, actual like reconstructed versions of White Castle around the place, which is cool, and it even has Hooters, which is another one. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, what are we here? Uh, Mick and Mac Global Gladiators, and then a big highlighter played oh, by yeah. Jack. So, you've done this, yeah. This is a Sega Master System game, which oh, I played wow. in. Uh, yeah, my cousin likes collecting a lot of Sega stuff, and I played it in his house. And I think I'd, it came out on Sega Master System, but I think it came out on I played it on Master System 2. Because, and because he got a Sonic version at a car boot sale, a boot sale like the Sonic the Hedgehog release, and that mm. came with Sonic the Hedgehog preloaded. I think it came with a couple of games from the yeah. previous series preloaded on it, and one of them was uh, Mick and Mac Global Gladiators, which is actually a McDonald's funded game, and they've done that actually a good few times. I found out after I played this game, and uh, it's it's just a, plat a kind of platform game. In like some world where you're fighting slime or something it's got it doesn't really seem to have that much to do with mcdonald's other than you pick up the m's and stuff but okay. i think it starts off you're in mcdonald's reading a comic and then there's a plot about, okay i think you it's got something to do with the comic book and that kind of thing okay but it's entirely mcdonald's like it's there it's a branded game okay all right and then they went and we talked before about the air version that it's stuff that they're doing now so they've, yeah. they've always been doing it um, that's the thing as well you need to be a fairly big brand to do a fairly big game like that yeah. you know there's, there's a good bit of cost um, I'm sorry I'm just noticing your pole position had billboards including Marlboro cigarettes yeah pole position is an arcade game from 1982 and it had um, before it went to Atari because you can't uh, the laws in America at the time were like you can't uh, at the, even in the 80s where you couldn't advertise cigarettes on like home products and stuff so like in on TV or a mm. DVD or whatever, there are certain things like depending on the placement, 
product placement and stuff you couldn't have it so uh, they had martini and Marlboro cigarettes so like you're driving in the arcade game on like a little racetrack and like a big Marlboro billboard goes by or a martini <laughs> one they also had like Pepsi and other companies but, but yeah, it was mainly the Marlboro one that everybody talked about yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and yeah that one, I went to Atari in I think the Atari 2600 in 1983 and then it was actually just Atari was just plastered oh, so okay. alright That'd be a bit strange because I know, yeah, there's strange things have been done to try and get around those advertising problems. Like I know one of the cigarette brands tried to bring out a coffee oh. and it was going to be like Benson and Hedges coffee. Oh, okay. And it was like, you know, That's they could advertise that advertising. everywhere, like Benson yeah. and Hedges coffee. But yeah, it's funny when you go back and you see, geez, you know, people were still getting the back yeah, of the, the stuff you could do back then compared to yeah, like a yeah. product placement stuff. Is but I mean, when different. you meet the guys who build it, built the games back then like I met the guy when he was building Commodore 64 games back in like 86 87 yeah and he wasn't you know he was only in his teens and like you, yeah. didn't, give a, you didn't give a damn about like oh, what you put into know. it you know um, and again he didn't make much money off it either because the publishing companies made all the money um, yeah. okay and then in 83 Coca-Cola made an Atari so basically Space Invaders wasn't it yeah they it's a really, really rare game. Apparently, it's sold on eBay for over a grand or something. Like, you, I think it was only people at this exhibition or this release for Atari got the game, wow. and they were sponsored by Coca Cola at this release. And uh, they, this was like in like the eighties. There was like a really big soda war. So it was like Coke or Pepsi, either Coke or Pepsi or Coca Cola or Pepsi. And it was like like Mac fighting each other all the time. The age, yeah. Yeah. Even in Pepsi's branded game, Pepsi Man, you're chased by what looks suspiciously like a Coca-Cola truck down a hill. And that was actually only released in Japan, that game. So, okay. But um, yeah, they made uh, Coca-Cola backed uh, Atari to make a version of their Space Invaders game into uh, Pepsi Invaders. And you just shot the letters Pepsi. They were the, the, they were the ships and, coming down. And there was like, I'm guessing some sort of psychological marketing technique to brand it into your head that pepsi was coming yeah <laughs> and it's really like it's it's it kind of worked in a way because people really want to find that game like there's game collectors out there who really want to get a copy of it yeah because it's so rare like it's just an <laughs> exhibition game it's a promo game yeah yeah, you know, yeah. it's like getting a like depending on like promo cards and card games yeah, and things like, like that. It's like a lot of my vinyl, there's all these promo ones that were sent out and I just managed to pick them up because there were records, you know, at that stage there were stations that were just not playing them anymore so they'd come in yeah. and be like, eh, here you go. So, yeah. Um, th that's my retirement scheme that way. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Invest in violence. Um, <laughs> Everyone on the internet's like, invest in Bitcoin. Yeah, invest in violence. Vinyl, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, it's not in the blockchain, it's just in the <laughs> just, <yeah>. storage. Um, <laughs> Okay, all right. Um, so they're kind of like, yeah, so that's kind of what we were saying before in the office. It's like placement of, of products in game can, can work quite well when mm -hmm. done right. Um, some of those are really good examples, like because people remember them or yeah. they're gimmicky enough that they make news. And that's the other thing. Like sometimes it's not just about getting it into the, the mindset of the, the players, like the likes yeah. of Doritos or anything else. It's the notoriety you get and the, the brand awareness of just yeah. the media finding out about it and populating or to the point where from 1983 so here we are 35 years later and people are running around trying to get the coca-cola again you yeah, know like yeah. it's just it's 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 still paying off and that's yeah that's promoting them all the time like there's playthroughs on youtube of like the yeah. trilogy of ronald mcdonald games yeah and then there's even sure like you collect Coca-Cola memorabilia anyway mm -hmm. so like I mean surprised I haven't heard of this sooner <laughs> yeah. well it's Pepsi Invaders so it's it doesn't actually say Coca-Cola on it but yeah you're, it says Coca-Cola in game though at the yeah. top and you're yeah. like fighting against we'd hope so because otherwise it would be the most counter for <laughs> yeah, it's like, like you know <laughs> Coca-Cola paying on says Pepsi Pepsi but it looks Pepsi, like Pepsi. a Pepsi game actually I see yeah. the cartridge for it it's kind of funny yeah that's a bit yeah. weird but again, that, that, Pepsi are the enemy in it, so. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, but even still, it has a touch of the Energizer about it. Like, you know, yeah, you know yeah. that, that could have gone either way. Badly, yeah. Yeah. People yeah. are going to see Pepsi plastered everywhere from then on. Yeah. <laughs> they give a real look. Yeah, now, maybe in the trade press, Coca-Cola got the mentions and that's what they wanted. Like, if it's yeah. only been made a couple of times, you know. Yeah. Um, cool, okay. Um, but yeah, as I say, it's, it's, it's an interesting take on it. 
and see if someone will give us some money to put a ship into Project G and mm-hmm. the DLC. Um, oh, like a, um, a McDonald's Project G ship or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was actually one of the the plans when we were doing Woolly Word until we kind of we we mothballed it for other projects. Um, was to do sponsored batches of levels, you know, yeah. because yeah. just the word search it was a nice easy one. You could just put the words in there, like you know. If it was coke, you'd put it's refreshing not, and taste. Something and like that is really cool as well because it's not invading anybody with a ton of advertisement. It's actually just how the game works, and yeah. it's yeah. interesting to see people, things you actually see every day in it. Yeah, like that's I think one of the biggest differences between having a, a brand stick out like a sore thumb and having it actually work. Yeah, is like if it was if it's re- really there in real life and it's a realistic immersive game, it's gonna work perfectly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. But if it's just like, like I said, with the Battle Gear Solid and like walking in the jungle and oh, we can't amount to do yeah. and it like powers up your health battery, you're like, it's a bit, yeah. bit strange. Yeah, but tactic. then again, that worked in the gimmicky way as well. So yeah, it's hard to find ones that didn't actually do their job yeah. right? because they're not mentioned. Well, I'm, I'm still surprised by the IKEA one. Like we have a lifelong yeah. IKEA fan now because of The Sims having an yeah. IKEA on H&M as well. Yeah. Um, cool. And then the last thing we talked about today in the office, and I have, I'm, I'm reluctant. I'm trying not to watch it if I can because yeah. I. It sounds too like the dark side of what we we don't do this, but like you know, if everything went you know dark side only, there are a lot of similarities with what's happening. Oh yeah, because it's a like dystopian future thing. Yeah, right? um, and I've seen somewhere it's like you know not in black because Black Mirror is the one we're talking about now, but like. Um, there have been other programs like uh, even uh, the Orville where they go to the world where everything is based on likes and dislikes and you kind of yeah. go eh, well actually China's not doing too, too different with sesame points and stuff yeah, yeah. so uh, we'll Freaks see out a little bit yeah, yeah I've but, had um, many an existential crisis watching Black Mirror at this stage like it's <laughs> but when we were talking about this particular topic here yeah. we're going to do in the show it turns out you had seen it first and then you've seen it since yeah. which was the 15 million Hertz? 15, yeah, yeah. 15 million yeah. Hertz episode where you like earn points by. Well, you earn them mainly by cycling. Like, people seem to be trapped. There's no background story to Black Mirror episodes. They don't actually yeah. go into how this happened. They just show something that you could be like, oh, that's a bit spooky, man. Yeah. That happens somewhere. Like, I think this one in particular, you don't know why. There's no motive to what they're doing. Exactly. And yeah, they there's end nothing up in that world. Exactly. Like you don't, it doesn't tell you. Like other uh, some of the other episodes, it does have like a plot line leading up to the big thing happening. Whereas, or it's like it seems like this really strange concept, and then at the end, there's like a plot twist or something, and it turns out to be something else. Mm. Um, but this episode is like it's really strange. It's just you're just thrown into this universe where people cycle all day on exercise bikes and watch TV. And the room is all TV screens, and they can't anywhere they look. There's like whatever they're supposed to be watching, mm-hmm. and like there's advertisements constantly, and you get you lose points if you try and skip an advertisement, and they'll track stuff that you do. So if you watch certain shows on your thing, they'll give you advertisements for certain stuff. So and there's a pretty funny, embarrassing scene yeah. in the bathroom <laughs> on stage where like this guy's advertisements pop up at the wrong time. Like so. Oh okay. Um, but it, it's 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 it, it's a cool concept. The whole idea, like the of the episode itself, the dystopian future kind mm. of thing. Okay, so it's a good idea for an episode. It's not a good idea for a lifestyle. Sort of no, story. I don't <laughs> think it should be done. No, like mm. people, I don't know. Like the only thing I could get from it was maybe the bicycle thing. Maybe they're actually using people to create power. Yeah, that's my that's, thought. That seems what it is. It's like everyone's it's like trapped that, yeah. in this building where they're in rooms but watching TV. But also for fitness as well. I don't know if you noticed, but people who were larger and it became the cleaners. Yeah, and that's what happens when you run out of points. Yeah. They think that you're a slacker. So I wonder, was it for health reasons that they're yeah. getting them to get into fitness and, by cycling? Yeah, and the, and the vending machine, like the apple is cheaper than the bag of crisps yeah. or whatever at lunchtime. It could have been a change in lifestyle more so than just generating power. Yeah. And it merits your merits are everything. Like it's you, it's your food, and I think in the, in the morning when he gets like toothpaste, it spends his merits. So he has to work them back on the bike then that day, or work them back by watching a promoted advertisement or something. Oh, okay. It's weird. But I think the thing with Black Mirror is just it's early. It can happen very soon if we don't watch ourselves and how we behave <laughs> and yeah. how we develop our technology. It yeah, can it's, happen. Yeah. Overnight. A strange concept. Yeah, it's it. Uh, I need that dystopian future stuff. It's yeah. pretty intense. It it sounds. Yeah. 
Yeah. They're like basically dark predictions for the future. Yeah. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Yeah, well, no, that's why the, the, the episode of um, The Orville was kind of like that. You kind of go, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. yeah, you yeah know, that, that's, that's realistic and possible. Yeah. But then again, you go back and even in movies, you go back to the likes of Demolition Man, one of my all time favorite movies. I know maybe the acting could be a little bit better, but it's still, it's, you know, but it's like, you know, salt is, is bad for you, therefore illegal. And, you know, oh, you mm. can't do this and you can't do that. And you've been fine credits because you're all chipped. And it's just, there, there are some things where you go, yeah, do you know what? I, I'm, I'm okay being a little bit more off the, the, the record. Okay, we'll call it quits there because I think we've gone off on complete Tangent. and utter tangents. <laughs> no. We may end up cutting parts of it just because yeah. we have gone on a complete and utter sidetrack. Um, so, Thanks for the video. Like we're we're trying a couple of different things out at the moment. So we've done yeah. me on camera on my own. It's very lonely. Um, <laughs> and then we've done this, and we've done the interview with Kelly last week, which I thought yeah. went quite well. That was good. Yeah, was um, and we've other bits and pieces in the pipeline. And I really want my three D printer to be put together. That will happen soon. Um, we will be back next week. Um, you can find us on Twitter at Coffee NF. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Think. yeah, yeah. We're on Facebook. Uh, Coffee NF Podcast. Coffee NF Podcast. And that's the same on Instagram. So and same on Instagram. So we have those both. Um, we have obviously YouTube, which is probably where you're watching the video. You might not be if it's on podcast. I just finished listing us on uh, Spotify and on Stitcher, I think. Um, we're so obviously on iTunes. We're obviously so. on iTunes. That one was the one I finished to figure out first. Um, the links could be somewhere on screen, depending on whether Jack finds them. If yeah. not, they're in the description below. Yeah. Um, I can't believe I'm now one of those people doing. Yeah, you're doing the. Yeah, I cringe, but at the same time, like it's it's so weird because it's like down there. Because otherwise, you would have gone like you know, yeah, which way is down there. Um, well, there's loads of different ways of doing that. Especially on YouTube now, it's like yeah. cards up here and description down there and annotation here. Or yeah, I saw. I love when you got the YouTube videos from like ten years ago, and they're saying over in the description because it used to be over there and it's not. There. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. So I'm dating myself by doing that. Check the description <laughs> wherever it happens to be at the moment. Yeah. Um, and here yeah. Here <laughs> <laughs> um, And this has been Coffee Not Found. Uh, thanks, Heather. Thanks, Jack. Yeah. And we'll see you again next week.